but I want to catch one of them big fish at the lake with the bush rod. Look at that. Oh, I got a fish after it. Bear scat right here. My old platform up there. This stuff's really bad for giving you hypothermia. It's so wet and cold. Nothing's easy in the bush, man. I'll tell you that. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Okay, so we're heading in to the spot. I had to stop. This has shrunk. So we're going to cut another spindle, which I'll carve up at camp before we hike to the lake. But I want to really catch a fish with this. I'll probably grab two because in case this one doesn't work out for me. I like this juniper, and when we get to the spot, there's not going to be juniper. I'm gonna take that one. This should reel fine. And then I'm gonna see if I can find one more as a spare too. At least I have a spare. So I gotta get some worms before I get to the lake. Look, it's all frozen. It's muck on top and frozen. So now bait might become a problem. It probably went deeper. This is miserable on the hands, I'll tell you. It's raining and the ground. It's cold. So away she go. I'm back at the first location that Zach and I spent a few nights at, this first lake. It's not frozen yet, but I thought this would be a good spot to revise my rod, get it fixed up where it's working. I can try casting here, and then I want to hike into the bigger lake where the bigger fish are. There's probably going to be snow up there, and I'm just hoping that that lake isn't frozen. So, have something to eat warm up and head that way. The wood shrunk and it's not not grabbing, so got to carve a new one of these. A few little adjustments. Cut the lip off of this so that I can cast it. here. I got to make two eyelets, one down here, one at the top, probably only need one.
I was thinking about doing this idea, but I think what I'll do is just sharpen this one. So then when I take it off of here, I can just put it on here, do my casting, take it off, put it back. Starting to get too uh, cluttered, I think. If I continue complicating things. Oh, it's a little hard. What kind of wood I used. That'll be the eyelet. To be honest, I think I only need one. I don't care how big it is. Oh, broke it. It's supposed to be strong. That is pretty strong. There's our eyelet. I think I'm going to have to put an eyelid about here to make sure the line stays where I want it on the spool. But I want to see how it'll cast with just one lure for weight. That went out pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance, but putting that back on. But it went out there. Not too badly either. Oh, I put it on backwards. I don't see any fish, but at least I know it can cast. Of course, my luck, I'll get snagged. No, I didn't get snagged. Look at that. That casted really well. That's like way out there. Oh, I got a fish after it. Oh, I almost had one. <laughs> I had a chaser. I better get some bait. Actually, I got a worm I found in my pocket. I got worms. That's nice. Okay, well it casts not bad. Bit of a nuisance pulling the pin and switching it, but it works. Oof, that's a long ways out there. Good as a regular rod. I got a couple coming after it. See, I don't need the ratchet system right now, unless I catch one. Oh, I got snagged somewhere. Ooh, I think it's, oh yeah, I see it. It's a big uh, log. Hopefully I can get it off of there. It's my favorite lure. This is where I need the ratchet. Might not get it. Oh well, see? That's how it goes. So I'm very happy with the way the bush rod is casting, but the eyelets, they didn't hold up. They were snagging and they broke. And so what I'm gonna do this time is I just happen to have, a, I like my smoked oysters, eh? So I happen to have a couple of tabs. Um, I bent this one in half. And then I just have to tie it here. I only need two eyelets, one down here, one near the tip, because otherwise I'm totally happy, but I wanna catch one of them big fish at the lake. And I think I'm gonna succeed with the bush rod. It's gonna be good. So this is uh, the first fire Zach and I had. Before we headed to the location, there's a little bit of snow, but it's not that bad. I'll show you the mountain behind me. Um, gorgeous, just gorgeous.
it's hard to get this on. Pretty heavy. Oh. Well, winter camping's a bit different than when we were here, I guess. A trusty rod. Gonna get one on this guy. Oh, I tell ya. This pack's heavy. I should have left sooner. I got, well, there's no way of getting back before dark. I gotta hope I get to the camp before dark, but I might not. Might be setting up camp with a flashlight, we'll see. I still got a ways to go. And I see there's bear scat right here. Well, I got this, but I just, but you know what? The funny thing is there's not nearly as much snow as I thought there would be. There just isn't. I thought there'd be a lot more snow. It's just this pack, that's my problem. I made it. Just before dark too. Got enough time to set up a tarp, get a fire going. It looks a little different now. You can see there's our, uh, our table, fire pit. Bit of snow, but not bad. I thought there would be a lot more snow up here, actually. So I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna sleep in uh, my old platform up there. The drawbridge is down still. There's Zach's platform over there. Remember when he saw the size of the bear, he thought his platform wasn't high enough, but it's still pretty high. I think it would have been okay, but. But anyways, I gotta get the fire going. I don't have much daylight left, so I wanna get on things. I'm pretty tired from that walk too. Coffee pot for the morning. Some of the snow out of there. Looks like the smokers uh, dried out enough to use for starting my fire. Everything's dead on it now. I'll burn the whole smoker I guess. I don't know. I can leave it. Sedimental value, I guess, eh? I'll just use enough of it to try to get the fire going. Ooh, that hike wore me out, I can tell you. Hope this isn't gonna be too hard to start. Well, it should go. Might take a little more effort than that. I'm not going to set a tarp up here, but I'm going to set one up in my shelter in case it snows. It looks like it could actually. See how much snows up here. I don't think there's any really. Oh, very little. Zach's platform doesn't have any snow on it. Mine's got a little bit. Oh well. Oh, I'll use mine. <clears throat> Not nearly as much snow out here as I thought. This is like past the middle of October. I thought I'd be dealing with maybe two feet of snow up here, but it's actually pretty good. Not that cold. Should do fine. Go to the lake tomorrow and try to catch a fish with my homemade rod from the lake that we were at. 
that we relied on actually. So anyways, I have something to eat, get the fire going good, set my tarp up. I like to have my bedding ready to go before it gets too dark and it's starting to get dark. Looks like it could snow. Bit of a smozzle. Must have been in a hurry to get out of here last time. A lot of lines and stuff. Those go that way. These lines are something else. Don't want to fall. Everything I do out here, I have to be careful. <clears throat> I was careful hiking in. If I get hurt out here, it wouldn't be good. I'm miles, miles from my truck and 50 miles from the nearest town and I'm by myself. Don't want to try to break a leg. People do know where I am, I'm not that stupid. Just have to be careful when you're by yourself doing any of these kind of things. Whew. What a day. Keep my flashlight handy too. Is there here any grizzlies? That's something people don't realize is grizzlies don't actually hibernate. Grizzlies, they, uh, they come out whenever it gets warm, even in the middle of winter. They semi-hibernate. If it gets very cold, they'll den up for a week or two, and if it warms up, they'll come right back out again. So they're not true hibernators. I haven't seen any grizzly tracks on the hike in, but maybe on the way to the lake, we'll see some sign. But that's why I'm going to still stay in the platform up there. I'm not taking any chances. Oh, made it through the night. Um, but I'll tell you, the weather's not very suitable. <laughs> you can hear it on the tarp, I'm sure. This wet snow sleet, whatever you want to call it. Kind of stuff that'll get you cold and wet in a hurry. So I don't know if I'm really going to make it to the lake or not. I'd really like to. But it's been doing this most of the night, so chances aren't very good that it's going to let up. So I don't really want to go there and just get soaked and take a chance on getting hypothermia in this stuff. I'm going to build a fire and have some coffee and dry some of my stuff up. I'll have to take this tarp down there once I wrap my bedding up because it's the only tarp I brought. It's a good thing I had it. Oh, by the way, Zach, the drawbridge still comes up. Still works good. You can see it behind me. Yeah, it still worked. It was a little frozen into the ground. I had to kick it loose, but it works. Collecting enough water for some coffee. It's not looking like we're gonna get to the lake in this. Cold, wet sleet. I'm not even looking forward to the hike back to the truck. My hands are frozen. I had a heck of a time getting that fire going. Everything's just soaking wet. I didn't want to even take the time to set up the camera to film it. I was just worried about getting it going. But anyway, I'll have a coffee and then make a decision. I mean, if it clears up, it got a little brighter out, but I don't know if it's gonna quit raining and sleeting, but it's kind of unusual. This time of year, it should be snow for sure. It shouldn't be rain like this or sleet.
it's miserable out, I can tell you that. Downright nasty. I tell you oh I feel like a drowned rat but we made it to the location and you saw the setup with the snow and sleet and everything else didn't make it unfortunately to the lake to catch a fish with my homemade rod I'm gonna go to another lake over here that I can drive to to catch the fish with my rod okay starting to come together you know what you're gonna find is uh, Nine times out of ten in the bush, things don't go the way you want. I just want to make sure I get a fish so you can see that it actually works. I need this tab to stay in one spot. And then I just want to catch a fish. And remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Actually, the weather, since I showed you how good the fishing rod actually casts, I was thinking May might freeze. Didn't freeze. We're good to go. I hope these fish are hungry. Oh, he's got snagged on something. Nice cast. I get this uh, wedge in my mouth here. Because the problem is the wood has shrunk since I made this. So now I need a wedge in on my ratchet system. Okay. I just want to catch one. But now my handle broke off. Oh my goodness, sorry I don't care. No matter, most likely lose it again anyway. Ratchet still works. I'm just turning it from this end now. I haven't had much success with this. Poor dear. It's just not working for me. I can't believe my stick broke. Might take a day or two, but I'll find a new one. I still want to catch one even if it's broken. Now this will take forever. I can't ratchet it with that. It figures my stick would break, eh? It's okay. I'll learn to live without it. Okay, let this be a lesson. Nothing's easy in the bush, man. I'll tell you that. My ratchet broke. But I still got a fish on it, believe it or not. It was sitting on the bottom and I'm playing with this. I actually did catch one. I see him swimming around. May as well bring him in, let him go. But like I say, when you're in the bush, you can't get discouraged. Discouragement. That's the big problem when you're in the bush trying to accomplish something because take it from me, nothing's usually going to go right. I'm supposed to know about these things. Oh yeah, look at this. So he's decided to pull. Oh yeah. Now he's wrapped around the branch here. Oh yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. We actually do have one on here. It's too bad I couldn't reel him in with, with the ratchet system. I mean, the rod works, I know that. I just have to keep working on it, working on it. I'm just winding the spool by hand. I'm gonna keep tension on it. So winding it by hand, what a joke, eh? Stupid stick broke, so. This is what I have to resort to. And I mean, if you're in a survival situation, oh, and then he came off right at the end here. Believe it or not, he did. I wanted to show you that fish, you see? Another blooper. Well, got him even without my ratchet system, but I'm still gonna show you that one. Might turn into a long video, I guess. <laughs> At least I got them with my rod. But I, 
Stop wrecking my camera, man. Anyway, caught it with the rod, but I'm not impressed with my stick breaking. <laughs> I gotta let him go. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna catch another one with my ratchet system. This guy can go. It's irritating, but like I say, that's how things go in the bush. Don't expect things to go perfect. 90% of the time they don't. As long as you stay alive, it's the main thing. End of the road. Nothing to do. And no hope of things getting better. Thanks for watching Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Hope you enjoyed that and keep your eye out for future videos.